By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are going to look at the semi-finals of the Hill Giant Cup. And we have two decks playing against each other, obviously. It's the black, white and blue deck with Underworlds uh, playing on the left. I think that's uh, Chef on the left side. And on the right side we have Avert, who's playing with Troll Disco. There's a nice little cheers before they start. So interesting to see. So both decks did very well. Managed to get top eight and to win in their quarterfinal match. And now they're uh, in the semis. And there we see some decent starts. A Demonic Tutor at turn two. Curious to see what he's going to look for. Doesn't have a blue mana, or else it would have said Ancestral Recall, because he's, he, I, f I believe he splashed the blue power in there. Um, I'm expecting an attack now by Avert, maybe. Yeah, there's two damage coming in from the factory, so he's down to 18. And there's a lot of glare, so it's not ideal, but I believe that's the Library of Alexandria, so that's probably what he dug up with his uh, Demonic Tutor. Clever choice. And let's see what Avert can do. I know he plays with one Stone Rain in his deck. Oh, and there's a Chaos Orb. So probably he's going to flip there on the Library of Alexandria. As you can see, I've put the flip in slow-mo so we can enjoy it. And let's see if it hits. And there he goes. And it's a clear hit. So the Library of Alexandria is out of the game. So that means that Chef couldn't really enjoy that library. I think he got one card out of that. Um, and let's see, and he's passing turn again. There's a scrubland. I believe I see a Hypnotic Spectre there in his hand. Wonder if he's going to play it out, and yes, he does. So that means another danger, but there's a Lightning Bolt. And those Bolt works great, great against uh, cards like the Hypnotic Spectre. Let's take a damage from the City of Brass. Another damage for a Time Walk and an attack with Mishra's Factory. So that means Chef gets down to 16 and Avert's on 18. Another attack in there. Playing pretty aggressive, but he can because Chef is completely tapped out. So he doesn't have to fear, uh, for instance, the Swords to Plows here or a Disenchant there. There is a City of Brass. So a lot of glare on the cards. It's not ideal. But we can figure it out so far. And he's passing turn. There's a volcanic island. Still no trolls, no discs. And so we're still waiting for the real action to begin here in this match. They both have pretty full hands. So there's the troll. And it's 3-3, uh, three, three, and there's an instant sword to Plows here, which is ideal against regeneration creatures. Does mean 3 life for Avert, so he's back to 21. Chef is on 14. Now he's gone down to 13, and he's playing a Mind Twist. Oh, but there's a Power Sink. Ooh. And that's bad luck for Chef. I feel this, this Mind Twist could have dipped the game into his advantage, actually. But what you see in this game is that Avert has a lot of answers. He had the Chaos Orb the lightning bolt, the power sink, right exactly at the right time. And it's probably because, well, because he's a good player, because he times very well. And there's a counter spell here on the underworld. So another counter spell there. No, we want to use power sink and want to use counter spell. So it kind of seems that a lot of weapons from... Um, from the black player here or being neutralized. There's a nice disenchant. Will there be another counterspell? My goodness, another counterspell. That's a third counterspell in a row and that's just bad luck. You don't expect him to have three counterspells in a row. And there's, okay, he cannot counter this. <laughs> so the strip mine takes care of the, uh, the Mishra's factory here and there's also a Suchi, which couldn't be countered because he was tapped out. And Isuchi is nice uh, when you're facing uh, a player with blue and red, I guess, because 
if it's not countered. Oh, and there is a sword supply series. So again, you can counter it on the Guardian Beast, and the Guardian Beast being a very important card in the Troll Disco deck. So despite the fact that Chef's only on 7 now, he can deal some damage and he seems to have the upper hand at the moment. So Avert's on 14, still has some time, he needs a disc I guess, to clear the field. And I can't really see what the card in the in the corner is there for, for Chef. I see Suchi Mishra's Factory tapped and then that other card. I have no idea. There's too much glare. So it's not ideal. Avert on 14. Is there going to be a disc for 4? And it's difficult. And because you're not playing with white, you don't have disenchant to just take care of those uh, Suchis. I wonder if he plays with Shatter. Probably sideboard. And he's passing turn, so decides not to play out anything. Maybe keeping stuff on hand here, instant spells. Maybe a lightning bolt for the Mistress Factory. Taking four damage. And there's an Underworld Dreams. I kind of like that play here from uh, from Chef, because he knows, well, if he has a counter spell, I'm just going to force him to play his hand. There's a lightning bolt on the face. Interesting choice by Avert. Choosing just to go for the life total, thinking I have nine, so I'm probably going to win this race. And there's a Guardian Beast. And those creatures are, I believe, 2-4 as well, or 2-5. I believe they're 2-4. Doesn't matter when you cast a, a Swords to Plowseers. And there's six damage in. Oh my god, and they're both on four. So this is, I believe Chef's hand's empty. And there's a Fireball. Oh. No, oh, he's one hand. Is that a sword to plow seers? Because then he can survive. If it's a swords, and no, it's not a swords. So that's a victory game number one for Troll Disco, but it was a close one. Very exciting game. Looking forward to see what's going to happen after sideboarding in game number two. Game number two is about to begin with Shefka on the play, the player on the left. He's lost the first game with this underworld black, white, blue build. Um, and as you can see in the first game, the Underworld uh, Dreams is just part of the deck. So it's not your traditional deck built around that enchantment. Uh, and what I like about the combination, oh, it looks like he's taking a mulligan here. Not ideal when you're on the play as well. Then again, he's already down a game, so he knows he has to win this one if he wants to move on to the finals, because this is the semifinals. But this is already looking good for Avert here. But what I wanted to say, what I like about the combination of black and blue, or black and white, I mean, is that you have those dish enchants and swords, and at the same time you have cards like Hypnotic Spectre um, that you can play with, which are just, you know, fantastic, powerful cards. <coughs> and then he's also splashed in the, the blue power there. So interesting to see what's going to happen. So you can only draw six here. And let's hope it's better. Scry one. Putting it on the bottom. Uh, it's great. He, he's putting the dice in camera position. That's great. Thank you, Chef, for that. There's a Library of Alexandria. So that, that's pretty... Oh, <laughs> there's a strip line. I wanted to say, you know, he'll have to wait a couple of turns. Um, okay, but there's the strip line. So again, Avert has the answer when he needs it. But now there's a Mesa Vif and a Moxborough. There's the blue mox and a soul ring. Looks like we have even more glare in, here in the second game, but I'm sure sure we can figure it out and I can tell you what cards are on the battlefield. There's a mistress factory there. And look at that, Chef could just pass turn like he has no lands in play. And there's the troll again. Doesn't have the bonus yet because there's no swamp in place. It's just a 2-2 for now. City of Brass there for Chef. So at least he's getting some mana. And with that maze, he can buy himself some time. It's not over yet. Far from it, actually. But Avert is definitely, is definitely having the advantage at the moment. Oh, and it's not getting any better with that Demonic Tutor being played. What will he... What will he look up? So if, if he's also splashed blue, I can't really remember. It's probably going to be an Ancestral Recall. What I do like as well is that I'm seeing more 
players actually look up Library of Alexandria when they have a full hand, of course, with the Demonic Tutor. The advantage being um, you can always play it if you haven't played a land. Um, so it's just free to cast and you cannot counter it. And it's initially also card advantage, just like an Ancestral Recall. But it's safer to play in a way. So curious to see. But he's chosen the card, so, so we'll see. Maybe he's going to surprise us as well. I mean, he knows his deck better than anybody. So nah. Tech there for four. There's a maze on the troll, and there's two damage for Chef. It's an ancestral recall on his side, and he cannot counter because he only has one blue mana open. And this is great, and that's how blue power can get you back into the game. I mean, drawing three extra cards after just starting with six cards and seeing that library uh, being destroyed so early with a strip mine, you would think, "Ooh, it's not looking good." But then an ancestral recall can get you back there. Drawing into a swords probably. Oh, there's a mind twist. This is brutal. This oh my so I guess he looked up the mind twist with that demonic. Wow, wow, wow. And just when I thought, you know, Chef's getting back. But here's an hypnotic specter. And there's probably gonna be a bolt. But if not, yeah, there's the bolt. I wanted to say if not, he can get back some momentum, maybe. Uh, probably gonna get two from the factories or maybe even four here. Yeah, four damage with the fact Oh, one one's being sent back and then with the one that's being sent back You can pump up the other I believe but that's not happening in this case. There's a guardian beast Cast with the black lotus Because what I want to say is I believe when you attack with two Mishra's Factory, and he uses the maze on one of the Mishra's Factories. It untaps, and you can use it to pump the other Mishra's Factory. Maybe I'm wrong, just let me know in the comments below what you think. But that's usually the way I play. And unfortunately, Avert's cards are a little bit to the left. And there's another flip. And we're going slow-mo again, but what I realize now is he has the Guardian Beast on the battlefield. And that means that his artifacts are indestructible. So after the flip, the Chaos Orb remains on the battlefield. <laughs> this is crazy. This is exactly what you want to do. It does return tapped, so you need to wait another turn before you can activate it. But this is bad news here for Chef. After you know everything else that has happened, I, I believe this is pretty much end game. I mean, he has to get rid of the Guardian Beast because he can just start flipping everything away. This is bad news. And he can just take his turn again. And uh, he's probably not going to flip. I'm not going to put it on slow-mo. He's probably not going to flip on the maze. There goes the maze. And returns tapped again. I guess they forgot, but there's four damage in. What can you do? And you maybe you're thinking, why doesn't he attack with his Guardian Beast? Once you do, and you attack with your Guardian Beast, and your Guardian Beast is tapped, the protection of Guardian Beast no longer works. So we actually saw that in um, the opening game where Avert played the opening match. So you can see that in the Hill Giant playlist if you're interested in that game. And there's another attack. I believe he's down on three now. And there's a lightning bolt and that would be end game. No, he's on one life still. And <laughs> that's it. I think he's killing himself here. Very cool game. Very cool to see the, the Chaos Orb and the Guardian Beast together. Because that's kind of a combo that you you see it, you hear about it. But to really see it in an actual game at a tournament is quite exciting. So that means that the Troll Disco deck wins this one. And we'll see the Troll Disco deck coming back in the finals. So Avert, congratulations. And we'll see you in the finals of the Hill Giant Cup. For now, thank you for watching this episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And if you'd like to see more old school magic, you can click on the playlists that are on the screen right now. For now, thank you for watching and see you next time. <laughs>